strong fire occurred in Alpatronic factory in Italy's industrial area of Piani di Bolzano on Wednesday morning. The fire has caused a large column of smoke in the area. Provincial authorities have recommended local residents to keep doors and windows closed, turn off air conditioning and ventilation systems and avoid outdoor activities for the next few hours. Emergency vehicles and an emergency doctor have been brought to the site of the incident. The fire has been brought under control. The president of the province and councillor for civil protection Arno Compacher is evaluating the situation. There have been no reports of casualties. Sì, sì, uh, arrivo, arrivo. Arrivo subito. Ok, ok. Russia no longer risks using Crimea Bridge to supply troops in Ukraine. To sustain the units fighting the war, Russia has recently relied much more on supply routes running across the occupied areas in mainland Ukraine than on the Crimea Bridge, which the Ukrainian armed forces have already repeatedly attacked. This was reported by Independent, referring to the data from the Molfar analytical firm. Maxar satellite images, analysts say, show that not a single military freight train passed along the Crimea Bridge railway track for the past three months. It is noted that the use of the bridge significantly decreased after July the 17th, 2023, when Ukrainian naval drones carrying explosives attacked it, blowing up a section of the roadway and the railway track. According to the head of the security service of Ukraine, Vasil Maliuk, until recently, Russia used to have more than 40 trains carrying weapons run along the bridge on a daily basis. Now, traffic has reduced to four passenger and one freight train per day, he clarified. At the same time, there is a surge in cargo shipments through Taman of Russia's Krasnodar territory. According to analysts, Ukraine should rationally use Western weapons and concentrate strikes on the route through Melitopol, Berdyansk and Mariupol, where Russia is now laying new railway lines to connect these occupied regions with Crimea and Russia's mainland. As the publication suggests, the new railway line, which runs from Yakimivka of the Melitopol district to Berdyansk and Mariupol and farther to Rostov, will likely be used by the Russian army for a new offensive which may kick off this summer. The railway route consists of 63 kilometers of new tracks and about 140 kilometers of restored ones. The invaders want to complete the construction by the end of the year so that the new network will connect more districts of the temporarily occupied part of Donetsk region. As reported earlier, the spokesman for the Ukrainian naval forces, Captain 3rd Rank Dmitro Pletenchuk, said that the illegally built Crimea Bridge will be destroyed and that the only question is the degree of the destruction. Vladimir Putin has been sworn in as Russia's president for a new six-year term. The Russian leader renewed the oath of office in the Grand Kremlin Palace for the fifth time. We are a united and great people. Together we will overcome all obstacles, we will bring all our plans to fruition, and together we will win," the 71-year-old Russian leader told an audience of ministers and dignitaries. 
I assure you that I will continue to place the interests and security of the people of Russia above all else," he added, recounting the text of the presidential oath. In his speech, Putin paid homage to the Russian soldiers killed in the war in Ukraine, describing them our heroes and referring to the war as a special operation. We must do everything possible to ensure that people who have proved their loyalty to the fatherland through action take leading positions in state administration," he continued. The ceremony held in the Grand Kremlin Palace was attended by thousands of guests, including Russian government officials, members of parliament, celebrities, and business figures. Among the foreign guests was Cuban President Miguel Diaz-Canel. Putin has ruled Russia for more than two decades and in March he secured yet another six years in power after winning a controversial election that was marred by a number of voting irregularities and lack of real opposition. The Russian leader is expected to name his new prime minister on Wednesday, the day after the inauguration.